Well, it's funny. At the time, I worked at Arnold Copas in Productions. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I right. Was a development assistant. He was the executive producer. And, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then I kept, so when that opened, I thought, well, maybe you know I have a calling card with this, and also my agent in Chicago, and this was a blessing. Any actor out there knows this. Um, I had the agent in Chicago had an office out here, mm -hmm. so I had an agent when I got here, and that's uh, that doesn't happen. It's that's, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. I was really lucky. And then how did it go out here? What? How did you get started? You out know here? what? I took off. You know, running. I, I I I did really well when I got out here. I started doing guest spots on sitcoms and. Um, kind of, it, it was just really blessed. It was a really good start. And then there was a couple of years in there where I did only voiceover. Mm -hmm. I was making a living doing, you know, commercials and yeah. um, uh, some animation, um, but I wasn't able to get arrested in terms of television shows. So um, I created a show for myself. I'd always been doing um, like sketch shows out here mm -hmm. um, with the same group of people, and we would just slap a new name on it, and we would do a show. You know, uh, almost every week we would do something and we would, you know, improvise and we would end up writing the scenes, but we would improvise to get them. And um, so I took a lot of the stuff that, you know, I was doing and I was doing some cabarets and I was kind of had these characters that I was doing and I thought, well, what if I write monologues or take the monologues I've done or the scenes and turn them into a monologue and turn it into a one person show. So it, what ended up happening is, it, you know, I had like three other people with me in it, but it was a pretty big hit. It was called um, Oh Sister, My Sister. It did really well, and and it was fun. It was a lighthearted little romp, and um, it kind of, I don't know that I can pin my, su my success to, mm -hmm. to that, but I think energetically yeah. it blew the doors open for me and kind of showed me that I could um, go to the next level. And my work just became much more profound, I think. Um, during that time. And, yeah, you know. and you didn't wait for an opportunity. You made no, I kind of create. I very much created one. And you yeah. kept working, 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 which is what is so fabulous. Yeah, like how and you I, get better yeah. at everything. You do, and I think the like for me anyway, the more I do, the better I get. Yeah, you know, and also the more you do, sometimes you can get stuck in habits, and I tend to get cast in the same thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I have to. I try with every. You know, I know they cast me for a reason because they want me mm -hmm. to do that thing. Yeah. But I always try, I don't want to give them what they don't want, but I always try to challenge myself to find something new, whether it's something physical, something psychological, and something mm -hmm. always comes, you know. So I just have to make sure I don't keep doing the same thing over and over again because then I'll get bored too. Right, exactly. Yeah. Wow, yeah, but I love that part on Boston Legal. Like, you're Thanks. the sex symbol of the, of the show. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I love doing that too because she's also very, a lot of characters I do are confident, but she's like supremely confident in her own attractiveness, her own, mm -hmm. you know, sexual attractiveness, and it's just unspoken, and it's a very calm, and yeah, I mean, I feel sexy when I do it, you know? And then the other thing you do, well, let, let's start with, uh, you got involved, I love these movies, and you're so good in all of them, um, you got involved with Christopher you know, Guest, uh, how did that happen? Well, I, you know, did commercials a lot, mm -hmm. um, and um, I auditioned and was cast in a commercial that he directed, so I met him for Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. So I, we met and we worked together and it was great. And um, it was very much a la Guffman, the commercials. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I kind of hoped that he would see that, you know, I hoped that he thought that I was good at it. So yeah. anyway, months go by and I went to the newsroom, which is a breakfast place in Beverly Hills. And I remember deciding, hmm, should I go to the newsroom or should I go to the Earth Cafe? Earth. And I, <laughs> exactly, the two places <laughs> to have breakfast, right. right. And, and so I went to the newsroom because I love that big pancake and he walked in. And he, um, he said, I was thinking about you. And I said, really? And he said, come to my office. And um, so I went to his office later that afternoon. And he said, you know, are you free for the next three months? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Let me check my calendar. Sort of the calendar. Right. And, and he said, because I, I, he said, I have an idea. I want to put you with Jennifer Coolidge for this thing I originally had. And I, of course, I knew who Jennifer was, too. He said, I originally had um, Catherine O'Hara as part of the couple. He mm -hmm. said, but I've decided to move her with Eugene, and then we're going to have someone else do blah, blah, blah. And then we would like you two to do, would you be interested? And I was like, yeah. So, yeah, kind of out of nowhere. It was really one of those things, you know, I turned the right corner. How exciting, was. Yeah, too. it was pretty, oh, it was great. And who knows if he would have thought of me if he hadn't, you know, you know, or put it together if he hadn't seen me. At the he end. beckoned you. Yes, he did. He did, and, and you I heard the call, yes. and you went to the newsroom. Yes, exactly. What was it like working with Jennifer Coolidge? Too? Oh, great. Well, we were both, you know, the newbies. We were freshmen. In, in but this both process. a lot of experience with the sort of comedy. Yeah, well, yeah, but still, I mean, um, she was probably more insecure than me. You know, when somebody's more insecure, is like really insecure about something, mm -hmm. you almost feel like you have to be the secure one. Yeah. So I kind of went, "We're going to be great. It's all going to be fine." But I didn't feel that, you know, hundred percent inside. But she was like. Oh. 
God, he's never going to cast me again. I'm not, you know. And she, of course, was just amazing. You guys are <laughs> just both powerhouses. Amazing. She's, you know, she kind of does that dumb thing, but she's, you know, dumb like a fox. She's really smart. She's really, um, really bright, and um, just does the strangest things. And I, oh, I you must love that. So, that, how much of that was actually improvised? Oh, it was all improvised. And we got to know each other pretty well. We hung out. We were there for like three months in Vancouver, and we took walks every day. And yeah, we had a great time together. But we, you know, we improvised the whole thing. But we would talk about what should we talk about, you know, tomorrow. So we really, you know, it was a very creative, fertile time. And that's those hard, you know, that old saying, you know, dying is easy and comedy is hard. Yeah. Y'all make it look so easy and it's so funny and entertaining. Well, you know what? I, and you know, I know how hard it yeah, is. Well, and, and also not to take away from any of us, but uh, it's, it, it's an act of uh, like brilliant editing too, you know, because not everything that comes out of our mouths is brilliant, you know. But if he puts it together the right way, you know, it's, uh, it's a real art to editing those and he's just a, the master. How does he set it up for you? How, what's it like working with Christopher Guest? He doesn't does really he doesn't say you? anything, and you know, I, I, I prefer that. I really just rather someone say, you need to get to this mark. He doesn't say anything. We get the script. This and, is the situation. Oh, he doesn't even do that. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God, really? He'll just say, we're going to be over here, and you'll be over here, <laughs> and then really? I'm going to say action. He really doesn't say much. He, he uh, lets you sink or swim, you know, and he's got great faith in us, so... When someone has so much faith in you, you really do rise to the occasion. And, um, uh, you know, he really doesn't. He might say something like, you know, that part about such and such. You don't have to say that again. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like it. I don't know. God, that seems like you'd be flying without a net. No, oh, yar. Yar, yar. And you like that? I do. I do and I don't. You know, it's, um, it's liberating and it's exciting. And then the good stuff you get from it is, it's like, oh, my God, I couldn't have planned some of this stuff. It just... And uh, then on the other hand, you know, if you're dry and you feel yourself repeating your same mm -hmm. point over and over again in a not very interesting way, you just hope he says cut really soon. And he doesn't. He lets it roll. You hear the camera. You're like done. And he's... <laughs> okay, maybe I'll reemphasize that point I just made, you know. But every once in a while something new comes up, you know, and that's what he's waiting for. And then they cut that. Yeah. He you watches know. you because he's editing as he's watching it. Right. So he's he's not giving you anything really and I, and I prefer it that way but it's you know he's basically going okay we're going to do it again and we're going to do it from over here but he's editing in his head which is that's fine let him edit put it together make it look great